this type of uh, spores are club like in nature and they are called the basidia. So we have the basidio mycetes. Then the last class there is the deutero mycetes. These are called, also called the fungi imperfecta. They don't have a perfect life history. So they are classified in this we call the deutero mycetes. Then the next kingdom, kingdom plantae. The kingdom plantae, then under it we have another division called the talophyta. And the characteristics of the talophytes include that they are aquatic, simple green plants. They are aquatic. We'll be talking, all these things that we'll be talking about are majorly aquatic since we've been classifying it. So these also are aquatic, simple green plants. They have the thread-like body structure, thread-like plant body. Then their structure vary from unicellular microscopic form to the multicellular microscopic form. So they can be unicellular or multicellular, but they are, they are unicellular microscopic or multicellular form. Then also, they are grouped into classes based on the type of additional pigments that you find in them. Like the blue-green algae that has the blue pigment in addition to its chloro chlorophyll. So also this group too. The chlorophyll they are the green algae. So they have majorly blue green pigments. So they have the chlorophyll. You can say chlorophyll. So they have chlorophyll. They are the green algae. Some are terrestrial, even though they are mostly aquatic. Then they are autotrophic in nature. That is, they manufacture their food on their own. They manufacture their food on their own because of the presence of chloroplasts. Then their food is stored in form of starch. Their food is stored in form of starch. Then the next class, the Fasciophyste. That's the brown algae. They have an additional pigment which is brownish in color and is called Fucosantin. Fucosantin is the additional pigment that the Fasciophyste have in in addition to their chlorophyll. So, and they are generally referred to as the seaweeds. They are generally referred to as the seaweed. Then the third class, we have the rhodophyse. These are the red algae. That rhodo is red color. So, and the additional pigment that they have is called phycoerythrin. That's the additional algae. Now we move to Kingdom Animalia, which is the last kingdom we'll be treating. I said we have five kingdoms and we have treated the other four. So under Kingdom Animalia, we'll be looking at the various phylums that we have, or various phyla. The first phylum we'll be considering is Phylum Silenterata, or the Silentrix. What are the characteristics of the Silentrix? They are simple multicellular invertebrates with their cells differentiated into tissues, no organ. You know, the various distribution of organisms, we have cells, tissue, organ, system, then the whole body. So this particular group of organisms, they are not differentiated into organs. They are just at the tissue level. You know, we have the cellular level, where we have the unicellular organism, but this organism, they are at the tissue level. They are also aquatic in nature. Their body is radially symmetrical. They can be divided into two equal parts. Then they are acelomates. Acelomates in the sense that they don't have a true body. Then their body wall is composed of two clearly marked layers of cells. Two layers of they are divided into they have two clearly marked layers of cells. So we call them diploblastic. They have two di diploblastic or diploblastic. They are diploblastic in nature. That is, they have the exoderm and the endoderm, the external and the internal layer. Then they are se separated by a thin gelatinous structureless lamella called mesoglia. That's, this mesoglia is the one that differentiates the two layers. That they differentiate the endoderm and the exoderm. Then another uh, character of this kingdom for this phylum the entrata is that their body wall has a single cavity, that is a single opening to the outside. 
which is the mouth. That's the only opening that they have, the mouth, in which food is taken in. And also through that place, they get rid of their waste. So they are so peculiar. They have just one opening, they, which is the mouth, through which they take in food and also get rid of their waste. Their mouth is surrounded by tentacles and nematocytes. These nematocytes are also called the stinging cells. They are used for catching prey and food. So they use it to push, push food into their mouth. That's the function of the tentacles and the nematocytes. They are stinging cells. Then structurally, these cylindrics, they are of two types. We have the hydroid and the medusa. The hydroid are the cylindrical and stationary ones. They are they are usually attached to the rock. They are attached to the rock. They are stationary, so they they don't they really move. They don't move. Why the Medusa are the ones that are free moving, free swimming umbrella. That's the Medusa. But the Hydroid, they are stationary and they are usually attached to the rock. Then, for their reproduction, their reproduction is asexual by body. They don't undergo sexual. They, do, they undergo sexual reproduction, but they also undergo asexual reproduction. And their asexual reproduction is by body, while their sexual reproduction is by the fusion of the gametes. Then their testes and ovary are found in the same individual, so they are said to be hermaphrodites. They have both the male and the female sex organ together in an, in an organism. So we say they are hermaphrodites in nature. Then examples of organism that belongs to this phylum cementurata is hydra. Hydra, sea animal, jellyfish, they all belong to the phylum cementurata. So when you are asked to give example of cylentrates, you have your hydra, jellyfish, sea animal as very, very good examples. Then we move to the next phylum, which is phylum platyelmids. Phylum platyelmids. They, on their own, they are soft bodied, then they are usually flat. They are usually flattened and they have unsegmented body, having a definite head and a tail. So they don't have segments, they are not segmented like you have in your centipede or your S1, for example. They are unsegmented, then their body is bilaterally. Symmetrical, you can divide them into two. Then they are triploblastic, tri unlike the cylindrics that are diploblastic. They have three embryonic layers the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. Unlike the other ones that just have the ectoderm and the endoderm. So these ones, in addition, they have the mesoderm. Then they are also acylomates. They also, the platelets have. A single opening to their alimentary canal, which is their mouth. The mouth is the single opening that they have leading to the alimentary canal. Then their mouth leads to a simple branch gut without an anus. So they don't have a complete digestive system. They have an incomplete digestive system because they don't have anus, they just have the mouth. Then they have flame cells present. These flame cells are responsible for excretion and osmoregulation, the balance of their body. Also, they have complex reproductive system. Their reproductive system is more complex than the cylindrics. Then they also are usually amorphous. That is the male and the female sex organ. You find it in an individual. Platyamids are parasitic to both man and other animals. That is, they live on they live on man and other animals to their detriment. An example of platyelmids, you have the tapeworm, which is found in the intestine of human beings. So that's a parasitic form. We find it also in animals. That's why you have to deworm you. They ask you to take some deworming drugs so that you can reduce their effect because they can be harmful when they are too much on the body. Then you have the free living ones that are not parasitic. You have the liver fluke. Then you have the planaria. Those are examples of the ailments. We move to the third phylum, phylum nematoda. Nematodas or nematodes are elongated cylindrical 
and they have elongated cylindrical and unsegmented body which is tapered at both ends so you have something like this taping at both ends then their body is bilaterally symmetrical they are also triploblastic that is they have the endoderm the mesoderm and the ectoderm but in this case their own alimentary canal have two openings you have the anterior and the posterior end. They don't just have the mouth. They have openings at both ends. Then they have pseudo pseudo. Unlike the other three, other phylums that we have talked about, they don't have a body cavity. That is why we say they are acylomates. But these ones, they have pseudo pseudo. That is a false body cavity. An example, you have the guinea worm. You draw, draw. Gancuculus, then the common human round worm, the Ascaris lobricoides, then the filarial worms, that is the Wucheraria. So they are harmful to the body. Then some of them are internal parasites in animals and in plants. Some are free living in fresh water. They have some of them living in salt water and some in soil. They reproduce sexually. They undergo the sexual reproduction then we move to another phylum which is phylum anelida or you call them the annelids annelids are long soft body cylindrically segmented animals they have a long body their body is soft then they are cylindrical in nature then they are segmented they have segmented body they are triploblastic and bilaterally symmetrical the annelids are triploblastic and bilaterally symmetrical in the sense that they have three body layers, the exoderm, the endoderm, and the mesoderm. Then they are bilaterally symmetrical. Also, they have a well-developed body cavity. They are the first in this kingdom to have well-developed body system. Unlike the other ones that are acylomates and the ones that are pseudocylum. Then they have well-marked metametric segmentation. That is, their body is divided into a series of units containing ideas.